So Western culture needs saving. The classical values were better. We have lost that as a society. We have lost our standards. We have lost any sense of identity in the West. But how do we actually go about that? And the first step to solving any problem is to admit there is a problem. To admit that a problem exists, it needs fixing, and to identify what that is. And frankly, it's our lack of values. It's a low standards we have for society, for ourselves, and how we should conduct ourselves, what we should expect from others, and what we should impart upon our children. It's a lack of respect for what came before us, recognising the sacrifices that were made, the values that were upheld, to lead to society that we have at the moment, the realisation that this is not the status quo. And it's necessary for us to admit that, to look at ourselves, to look at everyone around us, because the individuals make the culture, the values and the traditions that we embody on a day-to-day -day basis make the culture. It's not what we say we would like the culture to be. It's not these fluffy ideas around tolerance and acceptance of everything. That you can all live your own way. That you can all have your own values, your own standards. And it's all about participation. That doesn't lead to a successful culture. That didn't, isn't what led to successful cultures in the past or the maintenance of them. And forgetting that fact, having historical ignorance, leads us nowhere. So the first step is to stand up and say that there is a problem. To tell people that something needs to change. And something needs to go back to what was. To the classical values that we used to embody. That brought Western culture to the pinnacle of civilization, And there's an element of fortitude that is necessary within that. Because as with identifying any problem, there are people who won't like the existence of a problem. It makes them uncomfortable. It means that they need to change. That something needs to be done. That they might need to actually think for once. And people don't always enjoy the recognition of a problem. Or well, they very rarely do recognise that there is a problem. Because what needs to come with that is a solution. And so there'll be attacks, there'll be criticisms, there'll be denial of a problem. And fortitude is required in this place to have faith, to believe that the assertions that are being made, that there is a problem, and that there is a better alternative, is true. And that can be found by testing your own ideas, ensuring that they're solid, listening to other sides, listening to other arguments, which takes fortitude as well. To listen to other people and to not be immediately swayed. Because we should be tied to our ideas, to our beliefs, but also open at the same time. We shouldn't just bend over when someone says something different to us, just to please them, just to want to be part of the crowd, so we'll agree. If we have something that we believe in, if we can defend it, then by all means defend it. That's the right thing to do, that's the honourable thing to do. That's the pursuit of the truth. But when we are criticised, when there are ad hominem attacks, Another element of fortitude is being able to see the funny side of things, to be not so serious about ourselves, about our identity when it's attacked. Our idea is sure we can protect them, we can joke around, and when it comes to being serious, we can be serious. But for all other things, we'll never really be strong unless we can take ourselves lightly, until we can allow ourselves to be seen as weak. And you take this in an analogous form, in the sense of the father, the father needs to be strong, he needs to be a protector of his family in the traditional, in the meta-story sense. But he needs to play with his children. He needs to have fun. He needs to be caring for his wife. So this duality is necessary. The strength, the ability to be strong, to defend. But also to take yourself lightly, take yourself not so seriously. And that is a sense of fortitude. Because it is while you are not taking yourself seriously, you are still strong at the core. And you don't sacrifice all of that just for these moments, just because you recognise the different situations, you need different things. And looking in the more idea sense, in terms of ending ideas, the possibility that we could be wrong. But the understanding that just because this idea is wrong, they're not fundamentally undermine ourselves. And they've become so attached to an idea that if we admit it's wrong, we sacrifice our entire personality, then we are lost. People who overreact when an idea is challenged, when a belief is challenged, have no fortitude. They can't distinguish between themselves as a person and the idea. And this is where we enter into territory of words of violence, or you're trying to erase me by disagreeing with me. Those aren't the same thing, but they arise when we have this too close a bond with our convictions, with our ideas and our beliefs. We don't have the strength to separate them, to see them objectively, to challenge them, and to admit that it's quite possible that we could be wrong. So. The first element when it comes to solving a problem, when it comes to saving the West, is fortitude in the face of these things. To suffer criticism and attacks, and to have 
belief in ideas, not going to convictions, and that we'll never have our mind changed, but strong beliefs, enough to present them, enough to put them forward. Because it also takes courage to improve, because it's to recognise that there are flaws within our character, and that we might need to change everything, our hobbies, the people we spend our time with, the work that we do, what we do every day, as our character is built in the everyday, just as the culture is built in the everyday values and the everyday traditions that we hold. So there's courage needed in the face of that, to look at ourselves objectively and to know that we can make it through. And courage is also an element of understanding the consequences. It's not that we go forward with ignorance. We understand that what can happen when people stand against the culture. And the West isn't in that situation at the moment, as it was where lives can be threatened due to the beliefs or the going against the culture. However, it can develop to that point. And it is not courageous to be ignorant of the consequences and to do something. That's not brave. Bravery is being afraid, understanding the consequences, but doing it anyway. And knowledge extends beyond just of consequences, but also of history. Understanding one, how we got here. Understanding what values were held in the past, what successful cultures did, the traditions that they held, the, culture, the values that they held. Understanding how it can go wrong. Understanding the ways in which it can go wrong reading about a breadth of times, reading in depth about them, and trying to tease out the meta-stories that exist within them. What were the fundamental characteristics of these successful civilizations? What were the fun fundamental characteristics of societies gone wrong, of how cultures declined? And there's sometimes a criticism of second-hand experience that only existing through books, only finding things out that way. But you can't find everything out by first-hand experiences. Of course, experience the world, of course, talk to people, share ideas. But you can learn much more from a second-hand experience. It will never compare the breadth of experience and the wealth of experience that you can gain from that. If you read it critically, if you place yourself in that position, if you think about what you would do in that position, how you could act in the way that is being described, particularly of the so-called antagonists, of the bad people in history, trying to relate to them, trying to understand how they did what they did. Once we can understand that aspect within ourselves, because... Evil is present within everyone, but also to understand it when it comes up against us. We can be much better at dealing with people if we've seen them their mould a thousand times before, throughout history, throughout the different societies. There really is nothing new in terms of human experience. It's all been written about before. It all exists in the meta stories. So if we can only look at that, if we can only understand that, then life suddenly becomes a little bit easier, a little bit simpler to understand, particularly in the way of forging a path forward, deciding what we should do, what beliefs perhaps we should hold what core values we should embody and stick to. Because we can try and come up with them ourselves. But if we're all coming up with different ones, if we're all coming up with ones which just satisfy our own ego, core values which aren't really values at all, is to have values, there's an element of discipline that's needed. It's a standard that we hold ourselves to. It's not who we are. You don't decide your values by thinking about, oh, you know, what do I like doing? That must be a value then. But it's about what should I be doing? What standards should I hold myself to? and then deciding the values from there. Looking forward, looking at potential, not looking at what we are. And a great way to get the values is by honouring the past. Not this criticism that we have of the past at the moment, looking back and only finding the negative things. And because shouldn't we also look at the negatives? Shouldn't we look at the positives and the negatives? And all we're doing is trying to introduce the negatives into the conversation. And sure, there's an element to that that's necessary. As I said, in terms of finding out how cultures fall, finding out the negatives of them, can very often lead to that. But it's too comfortable to just focus on the negatives because it makes us seem better. It's dragging something else down so we can elevate ourselves. But this time it's done on the cultural level. We look at the negatives so we can disregard it. Same thing as calling someone a fascist. Then we don't have to engage with their discussions. We don't have to engage with their arguments. We don't have to disprove them because through this character flaw, we've eradicated their credibility. But if we take a culture seriously, if we look at the past and honour their virtues, look at the good aspects, then we elevate it. And then we have something to strive towards. We have an example, we have a role model, if it's done on the individual level. And do we not want to take an unobtainable perfect ideal? Do we not want to have something that we could work towards? A potential that we will never reach, but every day we can try to. Is that what we would want for ourselves? people we care about, that they're constantly improving day after day, 
And the only way that you can have that constant improvement is if the goal that you are going towards is unattainable. If it is this perfect ideal that you will never reach. But that's part of the game of life. That's what Christianity worked out 2,000 years ago. Creating the perfect ideal. And that we can always try to be more like it. But the acceptance that we will never be it. As we will fail time and time again. But the point is to get back up, to go again. And we can make a culture of that. Or we can make a culture into that perfect ideal. Something that we can always strive towards. On an individual level. In an individual level. Which will then translate into a societal level. So we shouldn't be afraid of these impossible ideals. We shouldn't be afraid of perfection. We shouldn't be afraid of beauty. And feel that now we've got to run away from it. We've got to um, denigrate it. We've got to tear it down because it makes ourselves feel better. So what? So what if it makes us feel bad? If we realise that we're inadequate? Great. If you realise that you're inadequate, then you've got a lot of things to do. You'll never be bored, as there's always something to work on. How if we tear down the culture, if we tear down other people? They've got flaws, they've got problems, they did something bad. And it makes us feel comfortable, it makes us feel good about ourselves. Because we create morality based on what we already do. What we are naturally inclined to do. And so there is no discipline. There is nothing that we need to do. We don't need to take responsibility for our actions. We don't need to realise where we fall short. As if we create the morality, then we never fall short. We are always living up to what we are. And it's a very comfortable position to be in. But it's not a good example for society. And really, the main way that we can save a culture is to be the example. To be the example of the culture that we want to be. To accept that we will fail. To accept that other people will fail in their attempt to be the perfect ideal. And to save a culture. And that's fine. As long as the mission is still in place. As long as there is still something that we are striving towards. So we should look to the values of the past. We should look to the values that I've held. That we should be better. That we should be eloquent. That we should value honour. That we should be brave. We should be willing to sacrifice ourselves for those we love. The society that we are a part of. That we should be productive members of a society. That we should honour the past. Honour the virtues that have existed in the past. We should respect the dead. We should respect those who have come before us. We should not think about what the other person is deserving of. If they've done something against us. But we should think about what is appropriate for us to do. We should create ideals. We should be hard on ourselves, be strict. See where we fall short, but know that we can always change that. We should focus on what exists in the day to day and that every single thing that we do forms our character. It forms the values that we hold and by extension, it forms a culture. And our success by adhering to these values and our faith in the fact that the success of past cultures came from these values and the individuals who upheld them should be evidence that we are doing the right thing, that we are following the right path. When we see people who are knowledgeable, who are courageous, who are fortitude, who believe in what they say and who have tested what they say, because they are beholden to the truth and pursuing it, who are not afraid to change their mind in light of new information, who demonstrate that level of rationality, that should be something that is admired, who are charitable, who can defend themselves, who can be fierce, but who also, when they need to be, can be soft and gentle. They have those two sides to them. And yes, this is speaking mainly to masculinity. To have those two sides. To be ready to war. To be ready for war. When you're outside the walls of your home. But when you're in your home. To be the most gentle. To play with your children. To be kind to your wife. To be caring. To sacrifice ourselves to all of them. To sacrifice ourselves to something higher. Be it society. Be it our family. Be it a religion. Be it something else. And recognise that there is merit within that. There is value within that. And by doing it we can transcend ourselves as we are no longer existing just to fulfill our wants, but we're existing for a higher purpose, something that brings meaning to our lives. Or, we can continue down the path of the West. We can continue down the path of fragmentation, where morality is individually decided. Because as Nietzsche said, God is dead, so now we have to come up with our own morality. But it does not work. Because everyone will have a morality which is suited to their nature. Because they don't want to hurt their own ego, they don't want to feel like they're not good. That they're a bad person. Because they don't want to be on that side of the fence. So it's better not to see. Better not to acknowledge problems. Because it's a much easier life. 
And that is what powers that be would want as well. When we hear talks about a new world order, a new culture that is being created, it does not celebrate the individual. It does not see the individual as a harbour and a container for that culture where individual values are expressed, where the individual has a choice to pursue those values, to fail, but be better for that, be better with that free will. But cultures where control is essential, where there is no free property, there is no free choice, there is no free will. That is the path that we have. That is a path that we've been trying, that people are trying to push us down. But I think it's much better to stand against that. It's much better to look at the classical values of the past, where the courage of the individual was respected, where the courage of the individual was valued. That's where these stories in mythology come from, these gods and these heroes. They're an individual. And it was a demonstration to a culture, to a people, you can be that. You can embody that. We have synthesised the values and the virtues of people who have come before us. And we put this in this one character and we worship them. And you can be that too. You can be immortal in that sense. If only you would want to. If only you would hold yourself to higher standards every single day. And if only you would always strive towards them. And by doing this as an individual, you will inspire others. And over time, you'll create a culture. Why do we not want that?